Justin here at Dolphins today. Chris Greer strikes in for agency and replaces Shaq Barrett in the form of Emmanuel Agba. Yes, you're hearing that correctly. Emmanuel Agba is re-signed by the Miami Dolphins. So the two sides reunite as Agba joins this Dolphins roster and Dolphins defense to be this team's third edge after Shaq Barrett unexpectedly announced his retirement on Saturday afternoon. This is the Dolphins today. I am Nick Roloff. Welcome in as we're going to break down everything surrounding the Finns after Emmanuel Agba signs and how he fits with this roster. But let me know if you're fired up by Emmanuel Agba rejoining the Dolphins by liking today's show. Hit that thumbs up icon to welcome Agba back into the fold. All right, this is actually big news though for Miami because we talked over the past two or three shows how important it was to get a third edge in the building before training camp really began. And I said yesterday that I would expect one of Yannick Ngakwe and Emmanuel Agba to sign with Miami within the 24 hours. The two edges were reported to Dolphins training camp or not training camp but like to the headquarters and worked out for the team went through physicals and obviously the Dolphins felt more comfortable with Agba's workout or they just really liked bringing him back because of the familiarity with the coaching staff and they thought and Agba thought that with new defensive coordinator Anthony Weaver is a much better fit than it was with Vic Vangio last year because Outside of the money aspect, which is the reason why Agba got released by Miami in the offseason, that Emmanuel didn't want to return to the Dolphins defense because he didn't like the scheme fit and wanted to go play in a different scheme that better fits him. But Chris Greer must have sold him. Agba must have realized, okay, with Anthony Weaver, this fits me much better now, and I think I could be good here as that third edge. And he was good here and his career for the Dolphins, I mean, he played the last four seasons in Miami. We know what he did in the first two years, having nine sacks in each of his first two seasons in 2020 and 21. He got off to a really hot start as a Dolphin edge rusher. Then with the combination of injuries, um, Jalen Phillips coming onto the scene, Bradley Chubb getting traded here. Agba kind of just took a step back, only had five and a half sacks last year which was a decent bounce back after only having one sack the year prior. So Agbo was able to bounce back in a big way, um, if you just say how bad it was in 2022. But I am bullish on Agba's able or ability to potentially resurge in this Dolphins defense. Like, listen, is he going to be some stud nine sack per guy again? Probably not, right? And I'm not asking him to do that. I'll, all I'm asking him to do is really give me that five and a half to seven and a half sack range in that third department because people, and myself included, have not talked about Calais Campbell enough in this puzzle that is the Dolphins' defense. Yes, he is going to be projected to be playing alongside Zach Sealer on the interior of this Dolphins' defensive line, but he has had the past of playing edge, whether it be in his early days at Arizona or Baltimore, Jacksonville, it doesn't matter. Like he has played edge in the past and he did so last season a little bit for the Atlanta Falcons. So when you start mixing Calais Campbell into the equation, well, then now you have a much more well-rounded edge group. And that could have been still said when Shaq Barrett was still on this team, but uh, maybe that's what the line of thinking was from Chris Greer in bringing back Emmanuel Agba because they know the person, they know the work ethic, they know how he fits in this locker room. And they're just like, well, maybe we'll take the less productive at this point in his career, Emmanuel Agba over Yannick Ngakwe, because we still know we have Calais Campbell in this building that could really get after the pass rusher or the quarterback from the interior or on the exterior. And Agba is a really good guy. According to all beat reporters, they really enjoy talking with him. The Dolphins enjoyed having him in the locker room, so it's not a shock to me that they elect to go with the person they know. But that also helps the development of first-round pick Chop Robinson and Mohamed Kamara. It does. And Agba's going to have to really take them under his wing, considering at least Jalen Phillips and Bradley Chubb aren't able to participate in team activities at the beginning of camp due to them being on the pup list. So if Chop Robinson and Mo Kamara need to get some talking to or veteran leadership, 
during drills or be talked through drills by a player rather than a coach, Emmanuel Agua can be that guy. So I'm happy that they did make this signing before training camp begins because veterans report today on July 23rd. And it's important to me that they got someone in here before they started their first practice on Wednesday, July 24th. Before we continue with today's show, let me know your one-word reaction to re-signing Emmanuel Agba. Could be happy, could be shocked, surprised, whatever your one word is, let me know. Yeah, so let's continue here with potential rumors after the signing of Emmanuel Agba because we've talked in depth about his fit on this Dolphins defense, but there's still a lot of questions that need to be answered surrounding the Finns as training camp does open on Wednesday. The reason why... It was important to get this done is so they can focus on some other potential things that need to get done as well. Obviously, a Tua Tagovailoa extension needs to get done. Could they go potentially sign Greg Van Roten? We've talked about him in the past. He visited with the New York Giants on Monday before they open up training camp here very, very shortly. I don't know if Miami's going to go out there and go sign Greg Van Roten in the next, like, two or three days. Maybe they'll give it two or three weeks in training camp and if Van Roten's still on the board maybe that's when they go strike for a right guard but to me it feels very likely that Chris Greer and this Dolphins organization is going to wait and see what they have a right guard the less they'll let Lester Cotton Jack Driscoll Robert Jones Liam Eikenberg fight it out during training camp one or two preseason games if they like what they're seeing and feel confident that one of the people can emerge as a starting right guard I think they let it be but if they lose that confidence maybe that's where they go in the free agency or maybe even try to strike a deal on the trade market now is that the right line of thinking that's a different question because I think that Greg Van Roten is so much better than any of the guys the Dolphins have on their roster it would behoove Miami to get a deal done right now and bring Van Roten onto this Dolphins roster going into training camp, but maybe Chris Greer feels a different way. Um, and then obviously the Tua Tagovailoa stuff is interesting. Um, we see Jordan Love holding in. Um, you wonder if Tua is going to do the same thing. He did that with mini camp where he did not participate in 11 on 11, did some seven on seven stuff, did team or single position group drills, but did not participate in 11 on 11 stuff. It doesn't seem like they're close to an extension, if we're going to be honest. Um, All reports have indicated that the two sides don't really feel like they're going to get one done before training camp, and that was always the soft deadline set, uh, it felt like, and it always looked like they were going to get it done because a month and a half ago, people were saying that both sides are in a good spot, they're progressing, um, and there was optimism around the league, it's done, but it's just never did and then optimism went down as Jeremy Fowler reported doesn't seem like the Dolphins are offering what Tua wants it also feels like Jordan Love is dangerously close to an extension which obviously impacts Tua because Tua has had more success than Jordan Love in the NFL and Love is about to get paid so if he gets paid more than Jared Goff or in that Trevor Lawrence department of money well why wouldn't Tua get what Jordan Love has got so it's always a tough uh thing to see your peer get paid when you're looking to get paid so this could be a developing story that we have to keep our eye on for the Miami Dolphins which is why you subscribe to the channel because we're going to have you covered on everything surrounding the Dolphins and we're going to be live later today as well we go live on Tuesday afternoon so come join us we'll talk the latest around Miami after the signing of Emmanuel Agba take some questions hang out talk some Emmanuel Agba in more in depth so make sure you join us with that hit that sub button and hopefully I see you then Uh, go Fins